So this question is, your comments after the game, were they more about frustration right after the game because you lost the game, or do you have a problem in general with what the offense is doing right now? Well, no, I think it's number one, just the fr- frustration uh, of us losing to, uh, losing to a division opponent. I think any time you play a uh, division opponent, especially in our division, you know, these games are very, very pivotal. Um, you know, it, it, at the end of the year, it's going to shape up, you know, to one of these uh, four teams uh, out of the NFC East. You know, and when, you're, when you're playing these games, um, you're playing for home field advantage. Um, obviously, we, we play well on the road, but any time that you – we can play at home and don't have to really travel, then that's, that bodes well for our team. So it's, it's all a matter of just being frustrated um, about the loss after the game. It has nothing, um, uh, nothing to do really about the offense. I think uh, with the weapons that we have on, on this team and the offense side of the ball, we can, we can move the ball at any given time. We're just not executing like we should. And you do know how many passes were thrown your way, don't you? I mean, it was, it was quite a bit. Well, yeah, I mean, I think if you break down the film, yeah, if you look at ESPN and, and you look at how they slice and dice things up, yeah, they're going to show passes that, that I should have caught. Yeah, if I look at those two, that's going to bode, well, bode negative on me because, yeah, I, I should have caught one pass, um, the one on the sideline um, of the Redskins. Other than that, you've got to look at, look at the whole scheme and look at the whole picture. If I was, uh, if I was working on ESPN, I could, I could slice it and dice it and make myself look good, just like they made me look bad. But I'm not really worried about it because I know, I, know, I know the business of, of, of how this uh, editing and all that stuff goes. I think, it's a, I think it's kind of funny that Marion Barber had eight carries. If he talked to the media, he may have really had something to say. Well, yeah, but, definitely. but he doesn't talk to the media. Well, so. definitely. I think uh, with this offense, uh, we, we know we have a strong running game. Uh, we have two capable backs that can really tote the ball, and that's Marion Barber and Felix Jones. Um, myself, when we're out there, I can't really complain about, you know, the plays that are coming in. You just go out there and you just run them and you try to make the best of those opportunities. Um, obviously, uh, you know, for whatever reason, you know, coach uh, felt the need to, to call the pass plays and we, we kind of abandoned the run a little bit. But yeah, I'm all for running the ball. Um, if I can go out there and spring those guys to, to get in the end zone, I'm going to do, do whatever I can, you know, to block for them and make that happen. Um, but that wasn't the case on Sunday. All right. Now you have been involved in, in some things in your career that got some media attention. W- would you rank what's happened in the last couple of days in terms of overreaction? The, the biggest overreaction of any situation you've been in on a national scale? Well, I think if you take ESPN out of the mix, uh, then, yeah, I think it's an overreaction, uh, especially, you know, from the production on that side and, and the guys that are on the panel. Um, you listen at some of the things that Sheeshan has to say and some of the things that Chris Carter has to say. And you listen to what Tom Jackson has to say. Everybody weighs in and they have their opinions. Um, if you look at, the, at, at Sheeshan, who was the number one pick, he's the ultimate un- underachiever. You know, uh, on that panel, um, you look at some of the things that Chris Carter had to say. I mean, I agree. I would agree. I would agree with one thing that they say that Jerry Rice is the best receiver. He's number one. You know, right, right below him, I'm second all time behind him. So, other than that, those two t- two guys, they mean nothing to me. And by the way, that's three times we heard Sheeshan. That, that's yeah. three. <laughs> now, he, uh, I do find it a little amusing. Did what was the name of his book? Oh, yeah. I mean, you, hear, you have a guy that says, you know, write a book, you know, give me the damn ball. <laughs> yeah. uh, but at this time, you know, we were drafted. Uh, he was the number one pick in the draft, the draft class that, I, uh, that we were drafted out of. And uh, I'm still playing, and he's not. So uh, he's weighing heavily on some of the things that I'm saying and I'm doing. You know, he's, he's on the panel with the Sharks. So um, he's doing his job, and I'm the reason why he's in the booth. You know, I, you know and I can all... I think everybody's aware here that when I was, bring, I was being brought to, uh, uh, to Dallas, he was the one that they let go to bring in. So I'm pretty sure there's a lot of bitterness, you know, on his behalf. You know, it, it's funny. I can only give my point of view. I mean, I'm, I'm not quite sure I'm convinced your comments after the game was the smartest thing in the world to do because you kind of knew all this would happen. Uh, but doesn't ESPN almost make it seem like it's personal? Somehow, I mean, what they did for Monday Night Football... In 30 minutes, all of them. I mean, how did you react to... <laughs> Dude, I, I, I said earlier in the show, I mean, you know, the ratings are probably down. Everybody's really... They need T.O. talk. They, they, everybody's <laughs> tuning in to the o- Obama and, and Palin and, and McCain. 
everybody's in, in tune with what's going on there. So, All right, final question then on this, and, and, uh, unless I sneak in one or two later. Uh, <laughs> my, my question is, why would you give them the ammo? Because you know that a lot of people out there are sort of anti-TO. There's a lot of people in this town who swore three years ago that you would destroy this football team, and they just want to say, I told you so. They won't leave that argument alone. Why would you give those people the ammo? Why, after a loss, would you come out and, and come off sounding a little selfish about what happened with the offense? Why would you do that? Well, it's not, it's not a matter of me being selfish. I think, uh, you know, everybody can weigh in and give their opinion. But I know what I can do when I'm on that football field. Um, I think I know what I can do when I'm involved more. Um, you know, and I don't think it was a concerted effort. You know, everybody saying that, you know, they, they changed the game plan to try to get the ball to me more. As again, I, I will say, if, if you look at the way they sliced and edited the film and everybody talk about the number of passes that were thrown my way, if you go back and look at the film, yeah, I mean, there were some passes thrown, thrown my way. But a number of those passes were thrown away because of maybe pressure, uh, coverage. Uh, there were some passes thrown high, low, whatever the case may be. Every, every pass that was thrown my way, it wasn't a valid catchable pass. And that's not to say anything about Tony Romo. Like I said, we all are not perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're out there, if you're playing baseball and you're a pitcher, you're not going to throw a strike every time. If you're out there shooting basketball, I mean, what... What, what basketball player have you seen, you know, that played a, played a, a perfect game, you know, shoot 100% from the field? So I'm no, I'm no different than, than any of these great athletes that go out there and try to perform uh, on any given day. You know, I'm not going to be able to catch every ball that's thrown my way. So that's just, the, that's just the nature of it. All right. That right there is why you should listen to Inside the Huddle. In fact, you can listen to it live on InsideTheHuddle.com, streaming uh, through Ustream.tv. We've got a live chat room going on tonight. It's a debut here on the Four Show of Inside the Huddle. We'll take some questions later from people in the chat room. Uh, that's why you should listen to this show on Live 105.3, and it's why you should come to the House of Blues every Tuesday because there's no holding back. There. How'd he do? Did he explain? Whether you agree or not. <laughs> All right, your special guest is coming.